Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hope everyone is doing well today. It's nice to see you out there. Marlene, Carrie, Heather, Jessica, and anyone else who's hopping on, welcome, welcome. We have a gorgeous, beautiful, wintry day here in Ontario. The sun is just pouring into the studio. It's gorgeous. We just finished... Um, a sweet surrender class, which was really, really nice. Just adjusting here. So we, um, new glasses, I guess you haven't seen for a few. I've been wearing these for the last few. I've had these glasses for quite a while, but I can't wear them uh, in my everyday. So I do like them for being on, on um, camera, but for moving around, they just fall off. So uh, if I'm just sitting in one spot, these seem to be fine. They work okay. But um, anyway, I prefer these because they don't have their rims. So I want to be able to see and I want you to be able to see. So here we go. <laughs> so for today, um, our focus will be on the 10 parmies. And the 10 parmies are... Um, it's kind of like a roadmap, um, a way of living that is a focal point, something to turn around like a fulcrum where you can use this information and these nuggets of wisdom to help navigate yourself through life in general. Um, it's a wonderful thing. And I wish more often that we were taught these sort of things in school. I didn't um, gravitate to ancient wisdom until maybe my late 20s. So it was not something that was really readily available for us. And I would love to make this more readily available. And so that's one of the reasons that I'm doing these videos and offering this type of information. For us in the modern world who are always sort of wrestling with the idea of how to practice living right in our in our daily life these paramis um, also known as perfections i'm not a great fan of that translation um, but it does explain it to some degree because we're kind of always aiming for um, a certain type of perfection um, even though perfection has negative connotations to it. Uh, the 10 qualities that lead to freedom through our own enlightenment and through our own conscious awareness. Welcome, Marion. Nice to see you out there. So I have put in the comments already, it's already there, um, the 10 parmies, which we will go over together. Um, but in the meantime, let us begin with our six soft belly breaths. And for anyone who may be joining late, that includes you, Mary. And if you want to rewind, um, you didn't miss much, I don't think. But if you would like to rewind to the beginning, um, a lot of people don't know that when you hop onto a live stream that you are able to do that. So you can just rewind um, the cursor back to the beginning and you can watch the very start of the video there that way. So it's wonderful to be here with each of you and whether you're here now or you're watching anytime later today or anytime in the future, you are with us, we are connected and what a beautiful thing that is. So let's take a nice deep full breath, closing your eyes connecting to yourself, connecting to your body, connecting to your innate wisdom, and connecting to one another with the knowledge and understanding that when we are united, when we are connected, we strengthen our inner reserves, we strengthen our immune system, we strengthen our ability to endure whatever it is that we need to endure to to celebrate whatever it is we need to celebrate. Being together is such a fantastic and wonderful thing. So let us drink in that to begin with. Drink in 
the fact that we are together, even if we're not, if we can't be physically together, we are together energetically. So getting a sense for that, taking a deep breath into that awareness. And let's think about soft belly breaths. So as we breathe into our navel, think about expansion into the navel and breathing into your place, your space, claiming your space on the planet, claiming your importance here at this time in history, claiming your place in the connectivity space. You are important, you are powerful, and you are special. So with each inhale, we're expanding into the navel with that knowledge and awareness. We're also stepping into our circle of connectivity with each breath. So starting with an exhale, empty the lungs. And inhale into the navel. Full expansion. Right to the top of the breath. Exhale through the nose if possible. Emptying the lungs. And continuing. Inhale into the navel, claiming your place. Exhale, empty, soften and let go. Softening the inner edges of the body, mind and heart. Full expansion and a long, gentle contraction. Letting go. And again, full expansion. And a long, gentle contraction. One more time. Turning the corners of your mouth up as you feel yourself linked in. Your connection to nature, nature's law. Connection to your source. A moment to notice your inner body. Notice your mind. Notice your emotions. And gazing upon yourself on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Keeping in mind that all of these terms that I use, you interpret them through your own lens. So whatever they mean for you, you can change them in your mind if you don't like them. Whatever those terms mean for you, source, connection, all of it. Switching that to whatever it means for you, because we're all looking through life through our own lens, the only thing that we can see from, right? So the Parmis provide a useful framework for developing a fruitful attitude toward daily activities, so that any activity or relationship which we undertake with wisdom holds within it the purpose of developing ourselves in a balanced and focused way. Sounds good, doesn't it? The perfections also provide one of the few reliable ways of measuring our accomplishments in the realm of work, our career, our relationships, and can often simply turn into dust and become easily forgotten. But the parmies of the character which we develop slowly over time. We certainly can't hop into the parmies, into the perfections right away. It does take time. Drop by drop, the pot becomes filled. So slowly over time, these become dependable and lasting, carrying us over and beyond the dramatic ups and downs of life. Ups and downs? We don't have any ups and downs. <laughs> So they deserve to take high priority in the way we plan our lives. Now, 
For me, I have been following these for many years now, and I always come back to them because they, each one individually, when you start unpacking it, is so vast and so deep. And we have actually covered, I think, three of these already in our videos. So I thought it might be a, a nice opportunity to overview them. Um, for anyone who's interested in going deeper, you can uh, search. Um, you can find lots of information. Send me a message if you want. I'll send you some links. Um, but they are wonderful. And you can even just put them up on your fridge or you know, if they resonate with you. So the first one is Sila, which is uh, proper conduct. And I will say also, these words are Pali words is the words of the Buddha, the original words um, preceding Sanskrit. So sila or shila, sometimes pronounced as, is proper conduct, which is morality or our own inner compass. So again, what that means for you through your veil of perception or your perception. Number two, aditana, aditana, strong determination. So when we put forth that strong determination, like today, I am going to do this, this, and this, and I'm going to get it done. So that's a strong determination, setting that goal and making darn sure it gets done. Number three, virya, V-I-R-I-Y-A, virya, diligence and consistent concerted effort. So those two work really well together, right? Diligence and strong determination. Number four, nakama, or renunciation. Trading candy for gold. I like that one. So the idea of trading our candy for gold, and it might take a little bit of time, it might take a little bit of effort, but giving, renunciating certain things, it can be very worthwhile for us. Sacrificing, sacrificing fleeting pleasures for long-term satisfaction. Number five, dana, and that means generosity or donation. Things like volunteering, uh, helping others, giving yourself selflessly with no intention other than to just be of service. Number six, kanti, K-H-A-N-T-I, kanti, patience and tolerance. Number seven, you'll recognize this one, meta. So we did, um, I think we've done a few actually, um, just ourselves in our word, but living in a state of truth. So a state of truth can be a state of being, like living in a state of love. So living in a state of truth, honoring that. Number 10, the last one is wisdom, or insight. So when you work on each of these individually and as a whole and become aware of them, everything begins to fall into place more easily. Oftentimes human nature is to just kind of say, oh, I'll leave that till later. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Um, these bring your life into the forefront and force you almost to do the things that you really want to do for yourself and also to bring the world to you. So bring yourself into the world more so and bring the world into you, integrating it all together. When we consistently work towards embodying these qualities, we may become like a mother or a father to the world around us seeing all through the eyes of love and understanding our power to shift and transform our world for the better. So it becomes not a selfless act, but more of a selfish act in the positive sense. So offering ourselves these gifts of the 10 paramis then helps the world around us as well. So it really works together. So see which one of those, and if you feel 
comfortable sharing, please do. Which one of those stood out for you? And let's see which one that we shall bring into our contemplation today. So we have sila, which is our morality or proper conduct. We have aditana, which is our strong determination. We have our virya, diligence and consistent concerted effort. We have our nekama, renunciation, the trading candy for gold. We have dana, generosity and donation. We have kahanti, patience and tolerance. Metta, loving kindness. Upaka, equanimity, sacha, truth, and panya, wisdom or insight. So let's see which one do you want to bring into your moment right now and also into maybe into your day, into your life for a few days to really hold that vibration to work with that. Virya. Yeah. I think. I'm going to choose Kanti today. So, Upeka, nice. So let's bring that in. Let's bring that in for a moment as we settle, eyes closed, just aware of our body. Tuning in. Let's take another deep cleansing breath. As we settle into that awareness, sila, yes. Knowing what is wrong or right, and only you can answer that, right? So breathing into the awareness of whatever, whichever one you chose, Notice where that settles into your body. As we fully inhabit the consciousness, the vibration and the frequency of that parami. Settling in, just aware. Noticing where you feel, where you see, where you sense that vibration, that frequency. Holding that in your awareness, thinking for a moment, how can you bring more of that frequency into your daily life. How can you become clearer on that vibration, that frequency? What sort of acts can you begin to do or continue to do more of that will help to develop that harmony for yourself? As you settle into the awareness within your body, holding that question, holding those questions and those ideas as they float in your consciousness. Repeating the word to yourself a few times, just repeating the word, whether it's in the Pali language or English, doesn't matter, just repeating the word to yourself a few times.
And as you hold that frequency in your body, wherever you may be feeling it, let's take a few breaths with the intention of deepening the frequency for yourself so that you can begin to set that wheel in motion to bring more of that frequency into your life, into your day, into all that you do and all that you offer to the world. Breathing into that awareness. Allowing yourself for a moment to simply be, nothing to think about, nothing to do, just being in your body for a moment, fully inhabiting your body. Taking another moment now to tune in once again to your connectivity and connection to each other, to all who are here in the space with us. Tuning in to your connection to your family and friends. To all of your loved ones in your inner circle. Tuning in to all of the beings in your nation. Tuning in to all of the beings on the planet. Tuning in to all of the beings in the universe, seen or unseen, including the animals. Bringing your awareness back to your heart center. So you bring your palms together at heart center. And 
Let's bow to the divine light that shines from each one of us, connecting us as one. Namaste. Thank you for being here today and for being part of this beautiful circle that we have created and will continue. It's very, very special for me and I hope it is for you also. I know that some of you have written me and shared with me how special it is to you. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you and your what you offer, not to just to this circle, but what you offer to the world and what you offer in terms of all the positivity and good energy that you put out. It's very special and I appreciate it. Thank you. <sighs> um, Heather, you, if you go below under the video, you'll see some uh, notes down there. I did put from one till 10 and I'll also um, put some more notes uh, about the Parmes as well. But I wanted you to at least have those uh, so that you could refer to them because the Pali language is different, very different. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Marion. <sighs> Lots of love to each of you. Big hugs. I wish I could give you real hugs, but cyber hugs we'll have to do for now. And uh, we'll see you next time. I'll be back again on uh, Wednesday Live. And there are lots of videos in the library. So if you have missed some of them, um, you can go in. And there's, a, there's actually a folder that I created with uh, community connectivity meditation. So you can just hop in there and um, watch any of the ones that you haven't seen yet. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> it's so lovely. I always get all warm and gooey. <laughs> so much love pouring out here. Okay, love to each of you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>